In this video, I'm going to talk about solving and graphing one-step inequalities. Well, like the previous video when we talked about just graphing inequalities, you're going to end up with a graph like open circle, closed circle, and our line is going to go indefinitely either to the right or to the left. But this time, we're going to have to take one step before we can solve the inequality and then go ahead and graph it. So it looks like here we have y plus 3 is less than or equal to 5. So just like an equation, I want to isolate my variable, get it all by itself on one side. I can do that by subtracting 3 from both sides. When I do that, the plus 3 and the minus 3 cancel out, which that was by design. So y now is less than or equal to, and then 5 minus 3 is 2. So if this is the deal right here, we're going to again do our handy dandy little number line. We'll put 2 right in the middle, that's our number of interest. And then we'll go ahead and put one number to the right and one number to the left. So on the left we'll put 1, on the right we'll put 3, so 1, 2, 3. And again this is just to the right of our 0 over here on the number line. So y is less than or equal to 2. So we're going to put a closed circle at 2 because it includes the 2. So anytime you have that equals 2 along with our inequality, we are going to put a closed circle because it includes the 2. And y is less than, so that means all the numbers below. So we're going to go ahead and draw a line to the left, just like this. Okay, so our answer for y plus 3 is less than or equal to 5 is going to be y is less than or equal to 2. And our graphical representation of that solution will be every number including 2 and then less than that. In this example, we have p minus 7 is greater than negative 10. So like the last example, we need to isolate this variable, get it all by itself. So right now we have this minus 7 over here with it, so the opposite of minus 7 will be plus 7. So I can do that to both sides of the inequality, just like you would an equation. We would call this the addition property of equality, which states that if you add one number to one side, you can add it to the other, and everything stays even Steven, right? So our 7's cancel, so we're left with just the p over there, which that's good because uh, by design we're trying to get that variable by itself, which it is now. So negative 10 plus 7 will be negative 3. So it looks like our solution is p is greater than negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead again and draw a handy dandy number line. So the number of interest will be negative 3, so we'll put that in the middle. We'll also put one number to the left and one number to the right. So it'll be negative 4 and negative 2. That's our negative 4, negative 3, negative 2 is our number line. Our 0 is kind of over here somewhere. So this is just the left of 0. And what kind of a circle are we going to have here? Well, this is greater than negative 3, but it doesn't include negative 3. So I'm going to put an open circle. And since p is greater, we're going to go to the greater side. Remember, this is the greater, this is the less than. So we're going to go over to the right, the greater side. And I'll fill in my circle, or not my circle, I'll fill in uh, my triangle here for my arrow over here. And I'll fill in my bar. So there we go, there's the solution for this inequality. So our next example is going to be 5m is less than negative 25. So in this case, our 5 is being multiplied by our m. So in order to kind of release that 5 and get the m all by itself, I have to do the opposite of multiplication which is division. So I will divide both sides by 5. So the 5 over the 5 will cancel and we're left with just the m, which again is by design. So m is less than, and we have to simplify this division problem. Negative 25 divided by 5 will be negative 5, just like that. And then once again, once we have that inequality solved, we're going to graph it. So our number of interest is negative 5. So again, I'll go one number to the left and one number to the right. And then m is less than negative 5, but it's not equal to negative 5, so it doesn't include that. So I'm going to put an open circle. And then m is less than, so this is my less side. This is my greater than side. So since it's less than, I'm going to go toward the less than side over here. So it looks like it'll be like that. Right there. So this is my graphical solution, and there's my inequality solution. Our fourth example 
is a number, so n divided by 4 is greater than or equal to 4. So since our number is being divided by 4, in order to get the number all by itself and isolate, I need to do the opposite of dividing by 4, and I need to multiply both sides by 4. So in doing that, the 4 on top will cancel with the 4 on bottom, and I will just have an n all by itself. And then I'll need to do 4 times 4, so that will be 16. And then the symbol of my inequality here kind of comes along for the ride. So it looks like n is greater than or equal to 16. So just like we've been doing, I'm going to go ahead and put 16 right in the middle. And I'll go 1 on the left, 1 on the right. So I'll go 15, 16, 17. And that'll be my number line right there. So if n is greater than or equal to 16, it's equal to this time. So we'll put a circle at 16 and we'll go ahead and fill it in because this time it includes 16. And if a number is greater than 16, our greater side is to the right, lesser side to the left. So if it's greater than that, I'm going to go ahead and shade right over here, shade our arrow, and there we go. So this is the graphical representation of our solution, and this is the inequality. n is greater than or equal to 16. And there's something that needs to be said about inequalities. Okay, so whenever we divide or multiply by a negative, we have to flip the sign of the inequality. And let me show an example. Okay, so if we have negative 3 times m is greater than, let's say, 18. Okay, so we know that in order to solve this, since negative 3 is being multiplied by the m, we need to divide by negative 3. Okay, well what happens is these negative 3's cancel, and you're left with m, and this business over here is negative 6, but now because we divided by a negative, instead of being greater than, it has to be less than. And I think the best explanation for this that I can come up with is, first of all, it's greater than a positive number. Oops, but when you flip it, it becomes a negative. So it can't be greater than the negative. It's got to be less than the negative because it flips. So it flips from going this way over to going this way. So when you multiply or divide by a negative, remember the negative flips it to negative to positive or positive to negative. So it'll also flip our arrow from right to left or left to right. So when you divide or multiply by a negative, you need to flip the sign of the inequality. So now it'll be m is less than negative 6, which if you graph that, it'll be the same as everything we've been doing so far to this point. Open a circle at negative 6, and we'll go over here to the left, because now it's less than instead of greater than, because we divide it by a negative. Okay, so what does it look like if you multiply by a negative? Well, what if you have something like x divided by negative 5 is less than or equal to 2. Well, since our x is being divided by negative 5, to undo that, we need to multiply both sides by negative 5. Again, this multiplication by a negative will cause this sign to flip around. Because instead of going to the left, it'll flip and go to the right because of that multiplication by the negative. And then our right side goes to negative 10. So just like we've been doing all video long, negative 10, negative 11, negative 9, it's equal to it, so it's a closed circle, and it's greater than, so we're going to go to the greater than side, we'll shuffle with off to the right side over here. So when you're solving these one-step inequalities and graphing them, you have to keep in mind if you're going to multiply or divide by a negative, you need to flip the sign of the inequality. When you're adding or subtracting, no big thing. Not going to make a difference. Okay, so there's one-step inequalities, solving and graphing them.